With all the snow and ice outside this time of year, I thought, why not bring some into the studio? I made this really awesome frigid rune stone that has really cool ice and snow effects that powers on when a miniature approaches. We're doing that this week on Tabletop Witchcraft. Hey there, and welcome back to Tabletop Witchcraft. This week, I wanted to create a runestone that lit up when a player approached. And to come up with a color pattern, all you have to do, living up north where I live this time of year, is look outside for all kinds of inspiration. The frost, ice, and snow is everywhere. I used a really cool color pattern for this stone, something I haven't used yet here on the channel. And I used a few other techniques from my Ice Cave book nook. If you haven't seen that, check that video out at the end of this one. Now, two really cool products that I used to make this craft. One is the Dark Runes Rolling Pin by Green Stuff World. I incorporate clay, this pin, and some foam to make the stones. And to light them up, I'm using the Conway Board by Terraintronics. Both of those sites, I'll have a link down below in the description, so go and check them out. As well as Firelight Fables Candles. I get a little kickback from every sale that they make, and you get a 10% discount by typing in TWC10 at checkout, so it's a win-win situation. And this Frosted Veils candle goes perfect with this build. All right, if you're ready, let's go grab some supplies and let's get crafting. All right, what better candle from Firelight Fables Candle Company than the Frosted Veils candle? Perfect ambiance for this craft. Now, if you want to grab this little simple set of plans, you can find a link to them in the description below to help out and support the channel. I'm making the stones out of 2-inch XPS foam. And I originally was going to make that circular portion out of a ping pong ball. You can see I definitely went in a much different direction as the video progressed. Now I'm breaking out this tool right here that I haven't used on the channel yet. And it's a hot wire knife by Proxon. It's got a nice temperature adjustment knob on it. I find that it does do the job, but it doesn't get as hot as the other hot wire knife by Wynons that you see on the channel that I used quite often. The issue, I guess, with that is that this one leaves a little bit of uh, wisps of XPS foam, which isn't really a big deal. You'll see exactly how I'm going to take care of that here in just a minute. I don't want the uh, internet police to be all over me for it. Uh, it was a little method that I used that uh, actually really worked really well. So um, just being careful. After you use that knife, I hold that over this flame right here, keeping, you know, two to three inches above that and just melted all those little hairs. That's something you really don't want to breathe in. Make sure you're wearing a mask when you're doing this. Now once we have the basic shape of the stone cut out, we can start doing some texturing and really kind of define the way we want this stone to look. Do a little research online, find something that you like, and just start carving right into it. And I like to use some aluminum foil to clean all of my hot wire knives. Just be careful, obviously the heat does transfer really quickly through that. Now for all of the carving with the X-Acto knife in this video, you're gonna wanna make sure that you have a brand new blade so it's really nice and sharp. You have the typical method you've seen on the channel before to remove all of the foam just using a clay sculpting tool. And I wanted an angled face to this to kind of lean back from the stone. So all I'm doing is shaving a little bit of that off. Now here's the Wynons hot wire knife. You know, I'm a fan of this, but this one goes from like zero to 60. There's no temperature gauge. So it's either off or it's really hot. That little chamber is where we're gonna stuff all the wiring here in just a few minutes. Now don't be too concerned with the holes that you put in right here. We're going to cover this entire thing in clay in just a few minutes. Now once we wire up this string LED, be careful because there's a front and back to these. The entire thing lights up, but you're going to get a lot more light off of one side than the other. So make sure you have the really bright side obviously facing out. And I'm just using a little bit of tacky glue to hold this in place. and put a little bit more tacky glue in here for this single LED. One other thing you wanna keep in mind as well uh, with the string LED is that you don't wanna bend it too hard of an angle because you might break it. Okay, now I'm going back to the stencil 
and I'm gonna cut this piece out so that when we add the clay, I know exactly where I'm cutting the piece out because you're gonna wanna be pretty close to exact because we're gonna add texture to it and it's gonna be almost impossible to add the exact texture back if you cut too much out. You'll see what I mean here in just a minute. I'm gonna make a little disc out of that, poking our single LED right through there. And we're gonna just pretty much push this right into place. Try not to remove too much of the texture that we put on it. You can always go back with that little sculpting tool and add some more texture once the LED's in place. Again, this is where a sharp X-Acto is gonna be handy. It's gonna keep you from kind of pulling and tearing at the clay. And you wanna have that little indent of about an eighth of an inch on the clay, it's important, because we're gonna recess another string LED light there in just a few minutes. All right, now once I got this Dark Rune rolling pin by Green Stuff World, I knew I had to make this video. I love detail, I love texture, and the rolling pins from Green Stuff World are, in my opinion, some of the best on the market. The detail and quality is absolutely incredible. Check that out. Now this stone that you're looking at, or the foam that I'm holding, is the second one that I'm gonna do. I didn't show you how to make that, but essentially it's just a smaller version of that first stone. This one is not gonna have any LEDs in it. Now placing a little bit of Eileen's Tacky Glue on the foam, we can then add the clay. Using the clay sculpting tool, we can remove clay that we don't want and just smear it right into the foam. Using a wet you know, finger here is gonna help you out a little bit. Okay, now that this clay has dried on the inside of the rune, we're gonna add the string LED, and then we can add a little hot glue just to hold it in place, making sure that you don't cover the face of it, again, because we want that light to be really bright. All right, super sharp X-Acto knife, very important here. You don't wanna pull and elongate or stretch the clay at this point. And this is where a stencil of any sort is going to help you out because you can see how exact I can get with my clay piece over the foam. You know, if that circle wasn't right or if that squiggly line for the LED wasn't right, you know, you're really going to have to start all over. And you can see how the clay is covering the face of that string LED so you won't be able to see it once we add our resin here in a little bit. Now, when we place the clay on the foam, we're gonna place it on lightly. Obviously, you can't press down on it because you're gonna ruin all the texture. You really don't wanna press in on a clay sculpting tool, um, kinda hard on those angled pieces to make sure it sticks. All right, there'll be a link up above to my easy LED wiring video. That's exactly how I wire this up. The yellow wire right here, I'm just elongating the negative on this and all I'm doing with that is going to add this reed switch. This is a product from Terraintronics. Check him out on YouTube. I'll also have a link down below to his site where you can pick up this little board and we're going to add a reed switch. Basically what a reed switch does is it's an open, I guess, contact. Um, so when a magnet is placed over it, they make uh, a connection and it allows uh, the current to flow through then lighting up uh, the LED. So just pause the video as you go along uh, in order to you know wire this up correctly. It's a fun little wiring project. You can see there's not a lot going on here. So if you want to get into reed switches, they really offer a lot of uh, cool things you can do when it comes to crafting and lights and stuff like that. This is a great video for you to jump into it. All right, once I have that all wired up, again, simple LED wiring video. I'll have a link up above to that. Uh, wire that up and we're going to hot glue all those connections so they don't pull out. And then we can put all those wires and all that mess right into the base of the stone. A little bit of hot glue over the Conway board, again by Terraintronics, and that's all set. Now the base of this is just going to be some chipboard. I'm going to cut a little door out.
And now we want to make a compartment underneath the room to hide the battery pack. I'm using that foam just to give me the, uh, the area that's going to represent the space. You can see right there, get rid of the foam at that point. I can then hot glue this aluminum foil, being careful not to crush it right in place. We're going to add hot glue over this whole thing in a little bit. It's going to make it really hard and strong, and uh, you won't have to worry about it crushing at that point. All right, a little bit of hot glue will hold that reed switch in place. And I really recommend all that loose yellow wire to pull that into that little boxed area underneath the rune stones. Okay, now we got some cast stone pieces. I'll put a link up above to my Hearst Arts and my Hydra Stone casting video. I'm just gonna add a bunch of rocks around the entire base. Give it that really jagged look. All right, now to protect that reed switch from all the stuff we're gonna put over the top of this, I just put a little piece of plastic. And to fill all our voids, a little aluminum foil. Between all these rocks, we're going to add hot glue. And then we're going to cover it all up here in just a minute. Now we'll have a magnet in the base of the miniature to turn the reed switch on and off. But what if you don't want to use a miniature? What if you just want to have the craft on? Simple, we're going to just add a magnet into a rock pile that we can pull from the back of the craft, which is going to be stored here because it's going to be attached by that magnet and just move it right to the front over that reed switch that you see right there. Now you're bound to have the chipboard peel up on you a little bit with all the stuff we're adding. So just put a little hot glue around the base and that will have a nice flat finish on the table. All right, super important. I've Mod Podge this, but this is some UV resin. I'm gonna place some UV resin over all of the lights where there's holes going through the foam. I'm gonna let it soak in for a few seconds and then I'm gonna hit it up with a UV light. I'm essentially sealing any cracks or crevices where the resin might be able to get through once I start pouring that. It's gonna prevent a lot of headache and problems down the road. Now for the paint scheme, I wanted this to be a really cool, literally cold looking craft. So to all of my grays, blacks, any colors that I use, even my wash, I've added blue. This is a wolf gray by Vallejo, and this is a really light gray that also just has blue already in it. I've added some Liquitex Flow Aid and some Airbrush Thinner to really have that flow into all the little crevices from the uh, Green Stuff World Dark Runes. And then with the same color I base coated the stone with, we're gonna do a light dry brush over the face of the entire rune stone, really bringing out all those individual runes on the entire craft. Pause the video right here if you want to see how I painted everything up and dry brushed it. You can see bottom right, I even added blue ink to my Agrax Earthshade for my wash. All right, now we get to have some fun and pour some resin. I like to just use some aluminum foil to help hold weirdly shaped crafts in place when I pour. If this is your first time watching the channel, Super clear epoxy, one of my absolute favorites when it comes to pouring resin. Very few, if any, bubbles with this product. I'm gonna add a couple bits of dye here, a little bit of paint, just to make it so it's a little bit harder to see through because this resin cures crystal clear. So by adding all this stuff, it's gonna make it so you don't just see an LED light in the back of the room. Using a little pipette, we can use that to get the resin exactly where we want it on such a small little area. And you're going to want to make sure that at this point you've got some time to keep an eye on the resin, making sure you don't have any leaks. Uh, if you do, you're in trouble. Um, you know, getting rid of any bubbles that might come up to the surface, that sort of thing. This took me about, I'd say, uh, a couple hours for it to get to a point where I didn't have to worry about bubbles anymore. Now digging into all of my greenery here from Diorama Precipe, I'm gonna grab some basically dead plants that I wanna place around the rune. And I thought, since everything's blue, a couple of these really beautiful red plants will look great stuck in there as well. It'll really pop once we add the snow. 
All right, I love using Flex Paste. It's a really great product when you're trying to add big snow mounds. I've used this in my Ice Cave Book Nook video. And we're gonna place just a little bit over that reed switch area. You don't want a lot of stuff covering that because again, you have to have the magnet kind of pick up that reed switch. Adding little snow mounds to the top of the rune stones, you can see that, as well as any little ledges really adds a lot of detail to the craft. All right, I made these little tufts myself from the long grass that you saw just a few minutes ago. And I thought these little red plants looked absolutely awesome against that white snow. And this is just a little bit of isopropyl alcohol to help the glue wash kind of set into all that snow and lock everything in place. All right, again, for my Ice Cave Book Nook video, we're gonna make some icicles. These are so realistic, I love working with these. You're gonna to wanna to make sure to have a mask on when you're doing this, because some vapors are definitely gonna come off of this. And basically, it's just some cotton with some UV resin. You can see how my clay sculpting tool is just barely touching that little piece of cotton. Just a second or two of that UV light hitting it, and it will really allow me to straighten and manipulate that entire icicle. It's got a very strong bond and hold. If you look closely, you can see some, I guess, smoke kind of coming off of this. So just, you know, again, like I said, make sure you're wearing the correct safety equipment. And when you add these icicles, make sure to add them all over the place, even to the small little rocks. You can really let this cure well with a UV nail light or that little flashlight. But if you happen to have an any cubic wash and cure station, it's the perfect thing to cure all that resin. Okay, so in the past few weeks, I've been trying to come up with some new paint schemes and techniques here on the channel to really vary things up. In my Wheel of Time house, I have that new white wash that I use for my grout lines. I did a really neat wet blend on my waygate, and in this video, I use a lot of really cool blue colors to add that chill effect to the stone. So the next time you go to craft, instead of just grabbing burnt umber and gray, grab some different colors, experiment, and I guarantee you're gonna have a good time. Also, if you liked the video, took anything away from it, please consider liking and most importantly, subscribing to the channel. I really appreciate it. As well as heading on over to Patreon and supporting the channel that way. I get something in return as well as you get something really cool like access to my private Facebook page if you join the coven. You can hang out with me live at night on Discord or the contractor tier where I'll actually email you sets of plans like you've seen in last week's video, the week before, and even little ones like in this week's video. One final way to help support the channel is to head on over to Firelight Fables Candles and get that 10% discount for yourself. I'll get a little kickback and it'll add a great ambiance to your next game session or to just have a really nice smell throughout your house. All right, until next time, I'll see you around.